Hello everybody out there and welcome to another episode of the Talk That Talk show with me, Barry Holmes. And yo, we got a big, big time weekend ahead of us. Shout out to my boy Alvin on the Instagram live stream. But, you know, I got a lot to live for, man, especially in a time where, you know, we're coming out again of this pandemic where, you know, at times, you know, the days seem to, you know, get a little bit around that same regular routine. And, you know, it's always nice to spice it up. I was actually talking to one of the people uh, that I work with at the school and, you know, she was talking about how, you know, she wanted to actually go to a comedy show. Uh, she's a security guard at my school. And, you know, she was so excited because she said all the time, you know, she's so tired from work and she just goes home. And, you know, she said tonight was the night that she was going to go out. And that's kind of how I feel about this weekend where, you know, getting back into the regular, you know, grind of being back at the full time job. Um, you know, it's just been a, a real grind and, you know, the body that I, you know, my body's been adjusting to, you know, doing that 90 minute uh, commute to and from New York City. Um, so I definitely wanted to take this this weekend to uh, just enjoy and, and to enjoy the fruits of the labor that uh, we've been putting out there. You know, I wanted to say a big shout out once again to Kenny Liu. Uh, who came here on the show last week we have my boy alvin who says that long sleeve is fire uh my uh sister's boyfriend Tariq, my real good friend he said that's a fact so you know this is actually uh one of the things that we're going to be talking about this is uh going to be called the garden state collaborative shirt um it's one of the things that you know me and kenny Lou have kind of been testing out uh you know trying just different ideas out but uh most importantly you know this brand is being launched over at uh my fitteds we're gonna be launching our official pins this is a hundred percent our pins here we're going to be dropping those in the my fitteds location and the big thing about it is you know on the back we have a signed card all right me and kenny lou took the the time to not only number these but also to sign them as well um these actually glow in the dark as well too real nice pin and something like i said that we came together to do and you know i think that the big thing that when when it comes down to like doing a collab and everything it all comes down to the the, the different types of people that you know you're able to work with and i know we all have people at work that you know we can't stand or sometimes you can't exactly work with them so you know, to again, like I said to Kenny before, to have this seamless process where we were able to create just something so dope that, you know, we've gotten immediate feedback from, you know, definitely uh, it, it's huge. And I think that to have myself in the store, you know, on Saturday, you know, it's one of those big life goals where, you know, anytime that you make merchandise or anything, you know, you want to have people support it. But, you know, to actually be in a store, you know, storefront location, you know, it still hasn't sunk into me. And, you know, I'm super excited about it. And, you know, it, it definitely is an, a, a hard, hard um, a testament to, you know, all the different work that I've been putting in out, off the scenes to, you know, just try and chase my dreams. And, you know, it's actually pretty dope because, you know, I've been doing merch longer with Talk That Talk Show. Um, but you know, we haven't, you know, exactly gotten our stuff into a storefront yet. You know, I've done various pop-ups and, uh, you know, just different locations selling them out of my car. But, um, you know, it's cool because here, you know, I have something that I started with, you know, one of my hat brothers and Kenny Lou shout out to Z Sean for uh, linking us together. And, and he, and I know Kenny talked before about, you know, friends, that can help you beyond just monetary value. And Zeeshawn was actually the huge person that uh, put us together and linked us up, you know, knowing my love for hats and knowing Kenny's love for hats and designing. So, you know, that's a true friend to me to be able to link us together. But, you know, to then, you know, create something so dope where we're putting on for New Jersey and, and creating our own brand, you know, just before our own eyes and to, to be out there, at the storefront, uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be huge and something that I, I'm really really proud of. But the key thing that I want to talk about with that is that you know it's within that collaboration. It's almost reinvigorated my 
my um, desire to make this Talk That Talk show work. And, um, you know, I've taken a little bit of time before our last Talk That Talk show release. The Flip Tank was dope. We had amazing success with that at the end of um, at the end of, you know, the summer season. We had that. We had the uh, I think we also did the American Flag Tank as well, too. But, um, you know, to be able to to have success with that, but, you know, have the success here with this uh, Garden State Collaborative to be in store. You know, I, I'm struggling to find words for you because, again, it's still something that I'm processing right now because what it's done is it's kind of like reinvigorated these aspirations within me to, to, to really make and drive this and, and, and try some different things to, to maybe have our, our goals be higher with this Talk That Talk Show merch. And, you know, the big thing that, I've kind of been a, a huge thing about with is that the purpose or the meaning, you know, part of the reason why people support talk that talk show so much is because, you know, this podcast, is something I put my blood, sweat, tears and, and my soul into it every single, you know, Friday night or any night that I come on the mic here with y'all. So, you know, this show means so much more to me than just a download or just, you know, to monetize it. And, that same principle goes with this Garden State Collaborative because one of the things that me and Kenny Liu had talked about was how we wanted to build the community and how we wanted to make, you know, this pop for, you know, bringing some awareness to the hat game and, you know, bringing and bonding people together. And one of the things that we thought about doing was when we did the release on live earlier this week, uh, we upped the ante, like you said, and uh, we did a raffle online, like an online free raffle. Anybody that joined on our live, you know, had a, a chance at this uh, Garden State collaborative print. And it actually wound up being pretty dope. And to see all the various uh, Jersey hat heads that just showed out on the live, you know, it was so humbling. And I even took the time to shout out some of my own friends. Shout out to Fire Brims, who has this dope pin. Let me take off the, the thing so you can see it here. Uh, we got Fire Brims here. He's got a really dope pin. And again, you know, we actually highlighted, I think, my boy Bones as well, too, and a couple other people. But, you know, it was just so dope to, to see all those different people, you know, conjoined on the line and, and just showing out some support, bro. And, like I said, I want to extend that same invitation here to everybody else. I didn't say I, I was going to do it. But if you are in on our Facebook Live or if you're in on our Instagram Live, say, I want in the raffle. Comment into the comments right now. My dad is going to take care of the people that are on Facebook. I'm going to take care of the people that are on Instagram Live. I'll write it down. Comment in. I want in the raffle. You will get the 72 of 100, to, um, you know, pinned by me and Kenny Lou, the Garden State Collaborative. So just put in there, I want in the raffle, all right? I'm going to write down our first person, Peter Dunn, who says he wants in on the IG raffle. So we're going to get him in there. Again, comment in. I want in the raffle, and this is a free raffle for one of these pins. This is a 72 of 100, and this will be in stores on Saturday at the Patterson location, man. And, you know, one of the things that I also wanted to speak on that actually came up in a time where, you know, I should be super happy and, uh, you know, to, to, to see the support, again, that we had on the live and then to, you know, have the support of people that have been DMing and, uh, you know, just pretty much saying how they, they're so excited for this raffle. Uh, then I really was surprised by some of the uh, the comments that were made to me earlier today by some people that I really did like in the hat game. And, you know, one of the things that my fittings did was uh, they had a, a, a they're having a drop on Saturday but they're having it at the White Plains location, right? So all the hats that they're going to be dropping, the new hats that people are panicking over, they're going to be at the White Plains location. And, you know, for some people, they were like, oh, man, you know, you guys should have done your pin drop at New York, man. You know, that's where all the hats are going to be. That's where everybody's going to be at. You know, if you want to get more money and you want to have more success with your drop, you know, you should have had it at New York Plains. Let me tell you something. I want everybody to be very clear. 
how how ret- how stupid does that sound for us to do a New Jersey collab pin release in New York City? You know, or in New York, it, it makes no sense. Like the whole premise of doing this was, you know, to highlight Jersey and to be about Jersey and bring together the community. And, and, and that has to be done at the Patterson location, man. So, you know, again, to those people that said to us, oh, you should have done it on a, a hat drop or you should have coordinated it like that and done it in New York. What I say to you is this. It's not about the money, guys. What it's about is, is you know, putting together something that, you know, you've put your all into, right? Something that, you know, you have mutual investment with somebody else in and you're coming together to then, you know, put this on the pedestal, man. You got to rep for Jersey, like my boy Carl said. And to for, for people, and I actually had somebody, which was the crazy part was this guy, he was asking me for an assist on, you know, the Pink Floyd hat. You know, there's so much panic over this Pink Floyd Phillies hat. And I get it. It's a dope hat. And it's only releasing in White Plains. So I had people that have come up to me at, at hat drops say, Yo, there's no there's no drop happening on Saturday at Patterson. I'm not driving to Patterson. There's no drop happening. And I literally had to ignore these people because at the end of the day, if you can't understand that we're having our pin drop regardless of what other hat stuff is happening, you're forgetting and you're you're not understanding the premise of what it is that we're trying to do with this pin drop and to have the people that said they're going to show up and you know honestly like I said this before give me one second but I said this before that you know I was I had a little bit of nerves here you know I'm not going to lie I was very nervous at first uh about doing a a a, a live in person drop I mean I'm so used to, you know, getting hats online or so used to, you know, the, the, the various drops that we attend, but I've never had to kind of like have that nervousness of, of a drop that I'm doing myself with someone. And, um, it's, it's, it's a different type of nervousness, man. Um, one of the things that me and Kenny Lou had talked about was like, yo, what if nobody shows up? Like, and that very well could happen. Nobody, there could be people that don't show up. I had uh, someone ask me, do you think your friends are going to show up? I could have my friends that I've known as childhood all my life. They might not show up to Patterson. And, you know, that's okay. The The bottom line is, and this is what I want to get to the point, the people that want to be there and the people that are going to support will be there. And regardless of whether anybody shows up or not, you know, the point that I want to get to you guys out there is, Believe in yourself. You know, don't limit yourself to what might happen or what could happen. You know, make it happen. And, and, and that's what I'm going out tomorrow with my friend Kenny Lou tomorrow. Regardless of who shows up, at the end of the day, I will be able to say that my pins, along with Kenny Lou, are being sold at one of the top competitors, the hat club, in the hat game. And I will be there in person to meet anybody that wants to support. And that's what it's all about. You're not going to get the support from people in the Talk That Talk show that continuously tune in if you're out here speaking bullshit. If I was out here strictly about the money, I wouldn't be trying to do free raffles to have people and bring awareness to what we're doing. I wouldn't be constantly trying to invest my own time, money, and energy into building every single thing from scratch. There is no book or there's no um, catalog or or, um, college book or anything that can tell you how to do a hat drop or how to create something dope. Nobody can just infuse. They can put the vaccine in you, but you can't infuse creativity into someone that isn't creative. You know, at the end of the day, you know, whether, you know, it's successful monetary or not in my mind, it's a success that I put my mind to something and collaborated in a time where it's very hard to work with people and we put together something really dope and we're going to actually be in stores. So if you want to, you know, support us, man, I appreciate it so much. We're going to be at Patterson. I'm going to be there at 11 o'clock at my fitteds, uh, the store in Patterson. It's, I think it's called the walk-in closet. Again, I'm going to be doing a free raffle right now for everybody that's listening in on talk that talk show. 
If you want in, just say, I want in the raffle. Say, I want in the raffle, and I'll make sure that you get in there, man. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, we also have had that's happened in this as far as, you know, changing, and I talked a little, I made a little joke about it before, but, you know, one of the headlines as I was taking the subway into the school, and I'll get into the school life a little bit different uh, a little bit later, but, you know, as I was taking the, uh, the subway in, one of the biggest headlines was that the New York Knicks will not have any problems with the New York City mandate as far as vaccinations. And pretty much what that has been is, uh, you know, pretty, you know, it's it's a statement that to me we're starting to see this trend where you know i've said it before but you know more and more people are getting vaccinated and because you know there's more and more people confident in this vaccine we're starting to see a lot of different mandates i literally went to a bar with zisha on the other day and just to be able to get inside you know you had to show your vaccination card and your id um, it, it's pretty, you know, it, this is the times and it's crazy because, you know, now we're starting to enter that era. And now when you have the headlines of people in the NBA that are saying, yo, I'm going to be, you know, vaccinated. My whole team is vaccinated. Scott Perry saying this whole team's not going to understand the mandate. And obviously my boy Theo did his homework because what he said is not Andrew Wiggins, which I was going to get into, but Andrew Wiggins is someone that has now stood up and said, Hey, I'm not getting this vaccine whether you're mandating or not. And now he is subject to potentially not playing at home games where in the home state of California, it's mandated that you have to be vaccinated. And, you know, it's very it's very interesting because, like I said, there was a time where I was going to be willing to not potentially work Giants games or to not accept the job that I'm working at now at PS 158 or, you know, it's this these were I literally called her up and said I cannot accept this because of this but again you know my my thoughts have changed you know um I'm at a different state right now and you know the thing is when you're at that type of level though and you have in a way that much to lose it to to other people they could say oh well why why won't he just get the vaccine and you know at the end of the day, it's anyone's personal choice whether they want to get it or not. I'm not out here to spew, go get it, go get it, go get it. That's not what I'm about here. But what I am saying to you is that I want you guys all to be aware of all the things that are starting to go around us, man. And for, you know, Andrew Wiggins to now potentially be missing half of a season, I want to take it just to the, to the, uh, the relatable level where people and colleagues that I've met over the past two weeks in New York City they're going to lose their jobs on Monday. You know, I had the principal call me in to try and talk sense into people. But again, we're adults at the end of the day, and you can't make uh, another adult do something that they don't want to do. Right. And I knew, you know, I was I would help the, the principal if she really, really needed me to do that. But at the end of the day. It's almost like talking to some, you know, you know, if you have someone that already has their mind made up, you know, you have to to listen. You have to have a receptive mind and also you have to have your ears open. And again, the 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 thing that I want to say to you is this. Here you have at the NBA level where you have someone that's saying, I'm not going to abide by this. And still they're saying, OK, now you might miss half of the games. Right. So still within these players, there's still a little bit of bendability, even though they're trying to be rigid with this. However, at the base level where we're at the you know non-celebrity status, you have people that are going to lose their fucking jobs on Monday because of not accepting this mandated vaccine. And, and it's crazy because here we have in the same home state, you have New York Knicks that are saying, hey, we're all vaccinated. This is what's going on. Like, there's going to be no concern here. But on the other end of the spectrum, you have people that are legit going to lose their jobs because of this. So at the end of the day, anyone has their own, you know, free choice. And part of the thing that the principal had said to me was that, hey, I'm not at the point where I can't, I can choose not to have this. I need this job. And sadly enough, that is where we are at. 
where you're dangling over people careers on, on on this vaccine and granted i am one of the people that did get the vaccine but it, it's very it's very i wouldn't say crazy but you know it, it's in a way it's almost hard to put into words when you see it happening kind of just the way things are starting to form man and, and dave says slippery slope we're stepping out on policy over logic in 2021 and you know everybody's entitled to their own opinion and i you know i definitely understand all the different viewpoints but on the opposite end of the spectrum here i was you know willing to not accept this job with the school and what it's turned out in these past two weeks you know just got my nyc doe id so i'm 100 percent officially nyc doe uh, employee as a substitute teacher and you know pretty much what you know the school has done for me is put on a path for growth you know i was at a place in a nonprofit where you know growth was uh situational in a way you know it was like you know you have you know people that maybe get a little bit more leeway than others and and things don't exactly seem uh equidistant or you know have that equality within right and here i've been in a school where you know, has pretty much taken me in on open arms. And in a way, like I said, I didn't even want to come back to education. But what these kids and, and what uh, the people and the adults at this school have done for me is kind of like reopened my eyes as to like, you know, just why it seems that it, I seem to just keep coming back to working in education. And clearly, you know, something's working there. Clearly, people enjoy the work that I'm doing. Um, I had the task today of making a MTV Cribs video of our uh, recess yard, which, you know, sounds stupid at first, but when you think about the purpose as far as doing a digital back to school night, how many people out there actually remember a back to school night at your school where, you know, your parents came and met your teachers and talked to them? I feel like we're out of that era now of uh, the parents being so involved, man. I, and I, and I'm seeing that just from a, a scale on, um, you know, the New York level where you don't even have the parents picking up their kids. They have nannies and they have people that, you know, don't look like them that come in and pick them up. So, you know, it, it's tough where you have this virtual, you know, logistics to where parents can't come even go into the schools. And, you know, part of being a, a educator, being able to make that, you know, connection is having those uh, um, productive relationships with those parents. And, you know, when you have that digital interface that's, you know, blocking you from making tangible, and I mean tangible with the meaning, like tangible connections, it's very difficult and, and it's difficult to be effective. So, you know, I applaud the school for, you know, trying a different method and, and doing a virtual back to school night to try and get, you know, these parents back involved. But, you know, these are all issues that are again being, you know, uh, brought back to my attention. And I didn't really think that I gave a shit about it realistically, because when it came down to the nonprofit, ultimately it stopped being about the, the, um, you know, the overall work that we were doing and more so about, you know, the money. And sadly enough, and it's crazy, like, you know, working at this school, I haven't thought about, you know, the money once, man. I've truly just enjoyed my position within there and uh, enjoyed the possibility of growth within that, man. And uh, I think that, you know, again, to, to touch on the, the thing that I had said before as far as, you know, keep bringing me back. I had a call, call from Carl earlier today. Um, once, and then I, let me get into the story real quick. But I will remind you guys, if you want in on the raffle, we had a couple people that just said, if you want in on the raffle, just comment in, I want in the raffle, and you will get in the free raffle for one of these uh, pins, Garden State Collaboratives, that will be at my fitted location in Patterson. But... You know, like I said, Carl had given me a call on the recess yard and he straight up was like, yo, um, I, I just wanted to check in with you. I saw you've been doing big things and, and pretty much giving me the checkup call, you know, and, and I really appreciated that a lot. And, you know, I had just given that same call to my friend Tim uh, because I see him at the bowling alley. He wasn't looking so hot, but um 
You know, it was so dope to get that call from Carl because, again, I was, like, struggling being reflectively person that I am. But I was struggling thinking, like, damn, yo, like, I don't know what it is about this, but I really enjoy this job, man. Like, you know, at first I was like, I don't know about it. But, you know, the more and more, you know, I enjoy my, um, you know, my role within there. And, you know, talking to Carl, he pretty much kind of broke it down where it's like, dude, like, you're adding value, you're adding substance, and, you know, that gives you that feeling inside. And, it again, when you're able to do something, you know, with value and trying to empower, you know, the, the, these uh, super positive synonyms, right? Um, when you live that type of life and you continue to try and go on that path, you know, it, you never know who you're going to affect, whether it's that kid that comes to me and says, hey, you weren't here yesterday. It, recess wasn't the same without you. You know, you don't know how that, you know, as you know, hearing that from like a first grader, you know, what that can mean for you and how that can get you through the day as an adult educator, man. And again, I have truly enjoyed, you know, just being in that helpful role, I guess you could say. And then extending beyond that, you know, I got a DM from some person that I went to college with back in the day. And, you know, she hit me up saying, hey, you know, I'm a teacher in Baltimore City. And one of my students has, you know, sports uh, journalism aspirations. I'm reading this Lamar Jackson article, but I don't know if it's good or not. Um, you know, can you can you help me or whatever? And, you know, I, I you know, I hadn't talked to this person in probably almost 10 years or whatever. But just the fact that they want to reach out to me and thought to me as one of those pillars of help, of hope for, you know, one of her students, you know, how could I, you know, resist that? And in one of the things that we talk about before is like, you know, just how hard it is, you know, to get into the sports media, especially as a black person, especially as a minority. But, you know, it, it, it's very difficult and, and you have to go and make those connections. You have to go and establish those connections and. You know, for me to have someone out there from York College that I hadn't talked to in almost 10 years want to come to me to help one of her students. You know, I told her I was happy to pay it for it. And I gave her, you know, my email and said, have the kids, student, you know, uh, email me and, you know, I'll be that help, whatever I can do. If I can read an article and give him some feedback and, you know, at least talk to him, tell him some of the things that I did. You know, I'm very all about that. I mean, my whole point of how I'm working in the schools in New York City is to help people and help these students, like, uh, to grow and mold. Like, the the teacher, or, I mean, the principal, when she brought me in, she said, hey, you know, we got to get these kids reacclimated to playing the right way, to, to, to social interaction in a positive way. And it's like, to be that pillar, to be that gatekeeper, to be that person that's, you know, going to lead them in the right direction, you know, that is the the, the biggest thing. And, and to have that opportunity to do that in the sports field in a way where, you know, people don't really want to necessarily share that information or share that access, you know, that's what it's all about, man. And, you know, for me to share my information with you all every single day about how I'm experiencing life and learning on the fly, you know, there's no book that tells you how to live life. There's no book that tells you how to, you know, help people to get to where they want to go. But, you know, the main thing is when you do things positively or when you go about things the right way, the right answers will fall in your lap, you know. And hopefully with these NFL pickums that I'm about to give you, hopefully the right answer falls into my lap because I was one or two picks away from winning Jeffrey's pool, man. I'm really close. But I'm going to give you three of, I think, are the hardest games to pick here. Um, once again, if you want in on the raffle, please comment and say, I want in the raffle. And you will get uh, number 72 of 100 of the Garden State Collaborative pins that will be dropping in stores at my fitteds at the Patterson location. Yes, there's no hat drop going there. If you don't understand that we're dropping our pins there, what are you doing, all right? What are you asking me about assist at another place for? We doing this here in Jersey, right? So the first game that's going to be the most difficult, difficult thing to do 
and to pick here, I think, is this Bears-Browns game. I think these are two borderline teams. We saw that the Browns, you know, lost Jarvis Landry. They didn't exactly have the easiest road. And then also, on the other end, you have a Bears team that's been underperforming. This is a tough game to pick, but honestly, I got to go with the star power here. And I think that even with a decimated wide receiver core, I think that the Browns, you know, they got a tough enough running attack with Kareem Hunt and uh, Nick Chubb. They're doing great things with Baker Mayfield. I think this is going to be their breakout game against the Bears, and I think they're going to, you know, right the ship here. Um, another game that I think is going to be very difficult to pick is the Saints-Patriots. I think a lot of us had the Saints, you know, pretty much locked in as a, as a win, I think, last week. But they didn't exactly come through. You know, Jameis Winston, he looked very, very beatable against Carolina, uh, especially in a division game. But what I will say is, is this. The Patriots having a rookie quarterback in uh, Mac Jones, He Mac Jones has shown that some bright spots in Bill Belichick, you know, has created this game plan that has made Mac Jones successful. So... You know, it's kind of hard to pick because at the end of the day, you want to believe that Saints defense can try and, uh, you know, steer us, steer us into the, the win column. But at the end of the day, Jeffrey said it, Jameis Winston is buns. He's trash. And, you know, is he enough not trash to beat the Patriots? And, and part of me, like I said, I woke up this day thinking I was going to pick the Saints. But I'm picking the Patriots at home, man, to beat the Saints. And then finally, the toughest game that I think on the schedule it is to pick is a battle of 0-2s. We got the Falcons going up against the Giants. Both have lost in, in, in some terrible fashions. But have no fear. Me and Jeffrey, Tyree, and CJ will be there on Sunday afternoon. And I'm so excited because... You know, it's going to be my first Giants game that I've been to since I went with my Uncle Mickey where Odell made the one-handed catch fade away in the end zone against the Cowboys. That was an iconic catch, but, you know, I'm definitely happy to be there in uh, Giants Stadium again. And, you know, the, we were talking about who's going to be grilling. We found a grill. My mom found a grill in the basement, so we're going to be grilling some dogs grilling some burgers, and just enjoying a football game, man. I'm excited. But, you know, ultimately, I still am going to have to make a pick. But before I do, I, I do want to say just how excited I am to go. And I, I will say this, man. It's, it's very important, like I said at the beginning of the show, for to you to go out and enjoy yourself. For that security guard to come up to me and, and be so excited to say about how she was going, you know, for tonight she was going to that comedy show. You know, I, I truly, I can't wait to ask her on Monday if she had a great time because, you know, she was so happy. And, you know, that's how I feel about this Sunday, whether it's my favorite team in the Chiefs or not. You know, I'm excited to spend time with my brother, with my, my best friend Jeff, and, and just enjoy, you know, just take a take some time off and, and especially in a grind and celebrate where, you know, I'm NYC DOE now, you know, a place I didn't think I'd be and hopefully joining teaching royalty up there. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about appreciating, you know, life each and every step that we go, man. And, you know, that's what I'm here to do. And, you know, once again, that's what I'm trying to tell you all out there as well, too, is that like, you know, we only we all get the same 24 hours. It's just a matter of, you know, what you want to do with those 24 hours. And, you know, finally, I'm going to give everybody one last chance before we get into this drink review. I'm going to give you one last chance. If you want in on the raffle. Oh, wait. Did I say that? Wait, hold on. I didn't even give you guys my pick. So I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I forgot to tell you because I've still been undecided, but. I'm going to rock with my boy Jeff, and I'm going to believe. It's like every week you want to believe the Falcons are going to figure it out. They like they don't. They shouldn't be this terrible, right? So I think this is going to be the game that they, they figure it out against the Giants. The Giants are a team that's known to beat themselves. So you know, I'm going with the Falcons. 
But this is your last chance, everybody. If you want in on this free pin raffle, the Garden State Collaborative pin that me and Kenny Lou will be dropping in store Saturday. Me and him both signed it, and this is going to be for number 72 of 100 that will be in stores. Put in the comments, say, I want in the raffle. Comment in, I want in the raffle. And my father will take your name down on the Facebook, and I'm actually about to give him this list of names on that have been from Instagram. But I am going to get into this beer review. Uh, Brian Spawn, my real good friend, I uh, went to school with him in high school, and he's been, you know, adamant on me coming down to Kentucky. But, you know, I appreciate him so much because he tunes in every week, and he tells me that he listens on the show on his drive-in. So, you know, I hope he appreciates the shout-out. But he was on me. He said, these last couple weeks, you haven't been doing a drink review. He looks forward to it. And, I, and I'm sure there are people out there that listen to this show that truly do appreciate the drink review so to you all i apologize these past couple weeks for neglecting you the people have talked and i'm about the people here at the talk that talk show so i'm gonna give you guys my review when we go to city field this is usually what we are drinking i like i think it's like the blueberry pomegranate or whatever one it is i can't remember but this one is actually one that i have not tried I said I was going to save it for a good time. We're celebrating here the release on tomorrow. A um, lot to celebrate here, you know, being an NYC DOE now. So this one right here is a busy hard seltzer. It has 5% alcohol, and the flavor, guys, is raspberry tangerine. Oh, my gosh. If that doesn't exactly get you uh, tickled, I don't know what will. So here we go, guys. In the ceremonial Talk That Talk Show mug, I'm going to tell you guys how this raspberry tangerine busy tastes. Mm. That was really good. It's very fruity, man. Pause. <laughs> but I, I'm definitely getting um, some good... Some good taste vibes here. Um, I, I Let's put it this way. Out of all the Vizzies that I've had, that might be one of the top three Vizzies that I've had because I feel like the two, instead of being two, um, you know, opposite flavors, it, it's almost like those two were complementary. The raspberry complemented the tangerine so well. And I feel like, you know, how have they not done this more often, man? So, you know, let me give this one more shot to see if I'm going to give it, uh, what I'm going to give it out of 10. Yeah, I think that's a solid uh, 8.5 out of 10. That's a solid 8.5 out of 10. I could definitely see myself having a little bit more of those, man. Um, real quick, I'm about to give my dad. Nobody else commented in that they won in the raffle, so I'm going to give my dad the paper here, and we're going to spin this wheel to see who will be the winner. If you are the winner of this, please DM me. I will DM you. Uh, get your information, get your address, and we'll ship this out to you. Or if you're close, we'll do a meetup. But um, once again, guys, I want to thank everybody that continues to tune into this Talk That Talk show and allows me you know, to be myself and uh, to just you know, share with you all just the things that I'm doing and um, the things that are going on. I think that in a time, too, where... You know, it's, it's almost encouraged for us to, to deal with things on our own. And I've said it myself. I mean, the name of our <laughs> UBA team is do it yourself, you know. So to be able to, you know, have people that, you know, support you consistently, you know, not only with this talk, that talk show, but also with different hat ventures as far as with my, you know, Garden State Collaborative. You know, I feel like, again, when you have, you know, the right positive core values, um, when you do things the right way and you have the right intentions, right? Um, I think it's so lost as far as, you know, the, the overall intentions of people. Um, let me see that paper one more time. But it, it's so it's so difficult to, to, to decipher the intentions of these people because at the end of the day, you know, you can meet someone and they can show you 10 million different faces. But it's when you 
you know, decide that you need something from them is when they will show you their true face. And I and I stand by the fact that, you know, I've helped out so many, you know, people. Hold on, brims and pins. But I've helped out so many different people here to where, you know, they without question want to help out. You know, I've been in a situation where I can count on Kev Schaefer countless times uh, where he's met me after interviews where I thought I had a job and found out that I didn't. And, you know, it was tough, you know. But, you know, when you have those people that you can depend on and lean on and, and that can support you in all times and especially in a time where they're having a different hat drop at a different location, you know, the people that will show out tomorrow, you know, I appreciate you so much. And everyone that continues to tune in on this Talk That Talk show each and every week, you know, it means so much to me because what you all do is you take, you know, a battery and you just in infuse it in me because, you know, when you have so many people that depend on you to show the consistency and to be what it is that you're professing that you are each and every day, each and every week, each and every second, you know, that means something. I, I used to have this uh, sign uh, in w the first office that I had. Yeah, my first office. But um, it, it said, you know, it, it's easy. I think it said it's hard to do. It, it's hard to do the right thing when no one's looking, you know. So, you know, to be able to continuously do that and and and, and stand for something, you know, those are the things that, that I truly believe in. And and I just hope that, you know, with continuing to, to put out episodes of this talk, that talk show to have Mark say straight facts and have people that truly believe in this and agree with me and have those same shared core values. That's what it makes me, you know, it's like I said, it puts that battery in my body and, and it adds more life to the heart to just continue to go out there and not give a shit if nobody shows up, to not care if nobody, you know, shows up on the live, you know, because at the end of the day, when you put forth that effort and you do what you say you're going to do, You'll gain so much respect, not only with yourself, but the people around you that you're looking to have support you. Right. And, you know, I think my father should have this raffle pretty much down pat, have most of the names in here. Any last requests? This is our last your last chance. If you want in the raffle, say I want in the raffle and we will get it started. So let's bring it around here. And in that process, guys, once again, you know, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsors. Um, big shout out to my boy Timmy Hugel over at Ink Parlor. Uh, he did great work with trying to design some of my bowling jerseys that I've asked him. I asked him to do two team bowling jerseys, and he did an absolutely phenomenal job on both of them. Also want to give a shout out. I saw him over at Brownstone before here. I uh, want to give a big shout out to Jeff over at Air, Air We Are, um, helping people with their heating and cooling. It's getting a little bit cooler, so make sure you hit them up to try and get your heating right. Also want to give a shout out to Joe Snow and Maria over at New York Life, helping people to get their financial freedom every single day, guys. Oh, man. Then I want to give another big shout out to my boy Savion Gaynor, who is my my really good friend, and it's always good to have people hold you accountable, right? And one thing I can depend on, Savion from Skydye Socks, is he's going to hold you accountable. But once again, we're about to get into this free pin raffle. We got a, a lot of people here on the live. Uh, thank you so much if you joined in and if you it said that uh, you wanted in on this raffle. We're about to spin it now, and let's see who wins the free raffle. All right, here we go. We're going to hit the button here. We haven't had a raffle here in a while here on the Talk That Talk show, but it looks like our winner is Flip Michaels. Big time shout out to my boy Flip Michaels. Uh, went to the Mets game with him a couple weeks ago. Uh, once again, shout out to Alvin because we actually linked us up together at his cookout the other day. But, um, you know, big shout out to my boy Flip. He actually just said that um, 
you know, we he wanted to speak to me. Uh, so, hey, now we got the chance, bro. I'm going to be contacting you after this show, and uh, we're going to get one of these pins out to you. Uh, also want to give a big shout out to my boy o OFCL Fitted. Um, we weren't able to get you on the raffle, buddy. I'm sorry we weren't able to get you in, but, you know, I'll be able to talk to you offline, and uh, we'll see if we'll be able to, you know, hook you up. I know you can't make it to uh, – uh, the Patterson location all the way from down south. So, you know, we'll see if we can uh, get get something linked up to you there. But um, like I said, once again, guys, this is the Talk That Talk show. I will be in attendance at Patterson location to, to officially drop our first ever pins in the store, guys. Um, means so much to me, and it means so much to me to have you guys each and every week come here on the show and, and show support, you know. Um, means the world you know like i said you guys are the battery that puts it in me to uh to go out here and give you guys you know everything that i got and, and pretty much be my open diary guys i appreciate you guys so much um i'm gonna yeah you can always count on me to, to come out here with another new episode with some high quality content and you know hopefully we'll do another raffle uh next time and uh guys you know, just keep believing me because what I've shown and what I've pretty much proven to myself countless times is, you know, when I continue to believe in myself, you know, the sky is the limit, man. And it can be very cliche, but when you really start to see the results of when you do believe, you know, it's a powerful thing. So thank you guys so much for believing me here in the Talk That Talk show. I will see you tomorrow at the Patterson location if you will be there for the pin drop. Uh, shout out to Kenny Lou once again for collaborating with me. Thank you all for lending me your ears on a Friday night. I love you all, and I'll see you all next week.